Hey everyone, today we're checking out the JoJo Dual Clans. <laughs> I want to thank Henning and everyone at JoJo for sending me the amp so we could check it out together and see what this thing does. But we know what a modeling amp is. It's an amp that uses digital and sometimes tubes like hybrid, let's say like the DT series by Line 6 or the uh, the Spider Valve by Line 6. Um, even the Super Champ by Fender. You know, a little bit of solid state, a little bit of tube. There you go. That's not what this is. This is an all tube circuit. In other words, so it's tube preamp, tube power amp, tube Tube, tube driven sound, tube created sound, using all analog paths, but using digital to control the relays and change where those paths go. Also using digital to do a couple things like do the biasing on the amp. Well, first off, it comes with a box of power tubes. So you get to choose with the tubes they give you, uh, 6L6s, EL34s, and EL84s. However, it'll also take KT66s, KT88s, and 6V6s. Now, I'm going to choose uh, EL34s. I've tried a complement of all the tubes, and this is the set I end up liking with the amp the most. Um, what's interesting to note is if you go with the 84s, uh, or like I said, 6V6s, the amp will be 15 watts power, where if you take the uh, 34s, the 6L6s, KT88s, or even the KT66s, you get 25 watts of power. So that in itself is interesting because instead of attenuating the power, you can actually change the power tubes to drop the power. Quieter amplifier at, for night play, studio, or smaller gigs, or if you want to run the amp harder and get more of that tube power breakup. We get six preamp tubes. One of those is assigned to the power section and then five to the preamp section. <laughs> Now there's a feature on the amp that is really, really cool. It will run either 16, 8, or, or uh, 4 ohms, and you can mismatch that. In other words, you can run an 8 ohm cabinet and a 16 ohm cabinet, and with the foot switch, switch between the two cabinets. So you could run an 8 ohm 112 cabinet with your clean, and a 16 ohm uh, uh, 412 with your dirty. Now the cabinet switching is on the foot switch. However, it's not programmed with the channel switching. So you can't just switch to clean and be in the 112 and switch to dirty and be with the 412. Now it does have MIDI and it is MIDI controllable, but I did not see anywhere where if we did MIDI, we could program that in, but I could be wrong. I just didn't see that. It has Bluetooth and that with an app, a free app, you can control the amplifier and do everything from change the paths of the, of the tubes to set up all your sounds. However, my Galaxy 6, Galaxy 8, and my Droid tablet would not sync Bluetooth, so they had to be plugged in manually, but my, I, uh, I, my uh, Apple tablet uh, did it fine. Okay, so now that we're looking at the front of the amplifier, let's continue on with what we're saying about the no digital versus uh, analog. None of the uh, knobs or controls on the amplifier are digital. They're all analog, which means they cannot be programmed. So wherever the knobs are set, that's where they stay. There's no way to memorize them. There's no uh, uh, nothing in the app, nothing in the amplifier, uh, in the MIDI controlling software, uh, the MIDI control that will let you go, hey, save my presets. They are where they are. In fact, because it uses analog pathing, in other words, turning on and off signal pathways or changing them, the only thing it can do is it can turn knobs off. So for instance, if you're using a fender circuit that doesn't have a presence control, then the presence control on the amplifier will be turned off. And, and there's a way to see that in the app, but there's no way to see it on the amp. There's no lights or anything that tell you what knobs are being used or not being used. So now what we're gonna do on the clean channel is we're gonna select a preamp and a power amp section. So what we're gonna do is go to the power section Sweet 18. If you heard that pop just now, that's the relay. So it's actually changing the signal path and you're probably hearing a little bit of electricity go through that signal path. Um, doesn't seem to be any heavy warnings in the manual that I saw or concerns about it, you know, damaging the speakers. If you're concerned about it, you can put it in standby mode when you're making these cho choices. Now for the clean channel, we can go ahead and pick uh, American Class A. And again, you hear a little bit of pop, um, less so because it was going to the preamp section. 
this is where reverb would have been really nice. Because it would just made the amp perfect right there. But you have an effects loop and you can put reverb to that. So we can change uh, the power sections. I'm going to go to the cool Vox. Hear another pop, large pop because it's the power section. And, and the amp, uh, without changing the controls, is now a lot quieter. Less push on the uh, speakers, I noticed. Less power. Let's go to the um, Superstar Blaze. And now, if you notice, the volume's gone. And it's slowly coming back up. I think what's happening now, I'm, I could be wrong, but I think they're rebiasing. I think the, the uh, app is telling it to rebias the tubes. Not the tubes, but the amplifier. Um, so it may be biasing it a little cold. So that being said, let's go to the dirty channel. So on the dirty channel, same thing. You have a, a huge complement of preamp sections to choose from. Everything from fast eddy, so which you imagine is going to give you kind of a... Now we're using that Master 30 power section, so we could go ahead and match it and find the uh, fast eddy power section. Here we go. Go ahead and change that. And it's quiet now because it's biasing. Um, I actually prefer the Professor X Plexi sound, and so we're still using the 5150's power section, we're just using a Plexi preamp section, and I really like that, and especially if we go to the uh, Plexi's power section. This is where I think the amp shines. It's in these. I just, not the high gains. I think that's not what they built here. It'll do high gain, but. I also like um, that, uh, where's that, Sweet 18. So this is the Plexi preamp, but the Sweet 18 uh, power amp. This is my favorite sound of the entire, of all the amp models uh, that it's doing. Now let's go back to the clean channel again. We're in the Master 30 mode. In the Sweet 18 uh, for power section, you can not mix the power section. So it's the same power section for both clean and dirty channel. So then we go to uh, the clean channel, and I'm going to go ahead and use that Sweet 18, believe it or not. And give it just a little bit of volume. And that's what I like. So it's like... It. It's an amplifier designed around the idea that you build uh, and design your perfect amplifier and now it's saved. We can go ahead and turn these uh, I'm actually going to turn this off. So it's off totally and the Bluetooth is off on the iPad So that's what the amp is from now on So last, let's talk about the looks. A lot of people don't really love the way this looks. I actually like the way it looks. My issue is with the JoYo logo being so large and glow in the dark. I really think it should be dual clons, uh, kind of like what Line 6 did. It's Bogner and then Line 6 in the small print. I think they should have really emphasized the dual clons uh, and then the JoYo in small. And that's because one of the last things that I thought was interesting about this amp was it was actually created by two Italian designers 
who came up with this idea of a build your own tube amp idea and they tried a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe and it didn't work and the short version of the story is Jojo got involved and put this amp into existence. It's a really impressive amplifier and I've had it for about two months and put a lot of time and, and, and a lot of energy into this. This is the most I've ever played any particular product before, before reviewing it and I really feel like if this is an idea that appeals to you, this is really a cool amp. Um, if this sounds like a lot of craziness to you, maybe you should move on. The only thing I can't tell you in this video is its durability. I, I, I've been pretty abusive towards it, but still even not gigging with it, that's not going to ever give you a, you know, a test. Only time will tell, so keep that in mind as well. As always, guys, I want to thank you for hanging out with me today and checking out the JoJo Dual Clons. And until next time, know your gear.